excited to have you guys here today for the artist salon number two with our artist in residence, Julie Bennett. Um, the focus today is on mark making. So we have an amazing group of artists here who are gonna talk about mark making and how it applies to their practice. And we have about an hour, a little bit over an hour. So I'm gonna let them introduce themselves to you now. Hi, I'm Julie Bennett and I'm the artist in residency here at Bankside Hotel. Thank you very, very much for joining me. Um, so, as you may know or you may not know, I'm a portrait painter and mark making is really important to me. I really like to see the, the physicality of the paint. I want big, bold brush marks. So mark making is dear to my heart. I'm going to introduce, well, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So. Here we go. Hi everyone, I'm Josie Tamsin. Here's an image of my recent painting. Um, I mostly paint landscapes and botanicals. Um, I try to keep my marks really quite loose and intuitive um, while still keeping a feel for the place. Hi everyone, I'm Lou Willis. I paint huge flower paintings um, with tiny weeny little brushes so that none of my mark making shows um, apart from the background which is much looser hello everyone my name is marie and i'm a painter of mostly urban landscapes but also some other things like trees i found what you were saying very interesting about the uh, tiny brushes. I also sometimes use tiny brushes and I also try for the marks not to be visible on my paintings. Hello everyone, my name is Michael Restrick and I'm interested in the accidental kind of mark making and the building up of a narrative over the course of the painting. Hi there, my name is Michael Siskovic, and I'm a painter specialised in still lights. I also do portraiture. Okay, guys, well, thank you very, very much for joining me in the studio. It's really, really good to have you. I'm so excited to have you. So, what I thought we'd do is we would talk about our initial mark making on the surface, of like how, how did we make our first mark? Um, uh, for me, I would never draw with pencil or charcoal, I would draw with paint to, to, to sort of to keep the energy in the piece. And I was wondering how you sort of all make your first marks. Like Michael, how do you make your first mark? What's, what's the first thing you do on the surface? Well, actually, um... I start out by creating a digital image before I paint. So yeah. that's like a large part of my practice. So I would usually um, compose a painting on a computer screen. And I would just find different objects, like different pots and stuff like that, or different textiles. And I would just rearrange them on the computer screen. And I Usually PowerPoint, I don't use Photoshop, I don't use Illustrator, I've never learned how to use them. I use the PowerPoint to cut for the spots and stuff like that. And then I rearrange them and I prefer like a digital image, digital painting, which is like a sketch for me. Obviously I can do it in a different way. I can also sketch it literally on canvas, which sometimes I do. But I think that it's, uh, to, to make it less stressful for myself and less complicated for myself, I would rather do the digital version first, just uh, in order to you know have a clarity of what I'm doing, the direction I'm going. And then once the image is done, I'm just trying to translate the colors from the computer screen or a printed thing onto the canvas. So obviously, yeah. So that's um yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah, that's, that's my question. So yeah. like my my over the course of painting. Um, I've changed the way that I'd approach it. Mm -hmm. So it used to be a bit more like Judy, where it's getting big marks, getting the kind of composition, but in a looser way. But then with some images and some proportions or figurative, it's more important for me 
to get um, the composition mm -hmm. like absolutely spot on. Mm -hmm. Which in that which case I will either do a large printout or I've actually started projecting a drawing mm -hmm. of that onto the board yeah. and then with paint going in loosely, mm -hmm. but so I'm comfortable and kind of reassured by the fact that it's going to be right. And because over the course of building that up, the building painting and sanding it away and taking it down. There's a, a looseness that comes from confidence that that is right in the beginning, mm -hmm. and that's why I think. Well, that's kind of game. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And and so and do you ever project from the PowerPoint then? Very also? often. Yes. Yeah, I'm just from uh, actually I printed the acetone and I projected old school projector yeah. mm -hmm. because I also like the you know these old school projectors that are so nice mm -hmm. and so cool and yeah. it's such a such a throwback to the past. But also yeah, I'm just just like in the squad like I. Very specific about the composition. Mm -hmm. And if I compose it on a screen and I feel like this is it, I've done my job, so I have to mm -hmm. project it on a larger screen or a larger canvas or whatever. And yeah, so the proportion is actually exactly the same as on the on small image. And that's what I go for. Mm -hmm. But also <clears throat> I think that I don't feel brave enough to sketch large. And that's another thing, that's another aspect of it, because I could in theory, but I think it's just uh, it's just faster just to project it, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not that it's lack of ability to do that. No, no. It's just like uh, you know, it's like you're trying to get there as quickly as mm -hmm. possible with the painting, and you're just okay, so this is the part of the process, and you know, and I can start to paint. That's what interests me the most. Yeah, so. I like what you said about the idea of um, the, the projector gives you the confidence that everything's in the right place, then it allows you to be more yeah. right. Because I, 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 a lot of my paintings in the, lately I've been reading art mm -hmm. and I've been thinking, why am I doing this? But of course, it, that's exactly that it, isn't it? It's the, it's the confidence that it gives you. And the quicker it was quicker because then you just don't want to get on and enjoy yeah, it. It's because you know that everything's in the right place. Yeah. And so up here you can go, well, I know I can be confident, that's it. Yes. So this this can be loose. Yes. But if your brain's not loose, thinking, or oh, I'm not sure if it's right, yeah. Then you're not going to tighten up. Yeah. And and do you find um that that you, that you would move away sometimes from the digital thing that you've made, or or would you always would it, would you ever think, oh god, this isn't working, and then, or, or would, it, would it always work? It's a digital thing. From, from digital to canvas? Uh, well, I think that all the time it's like, it, there's no guarantee it's going to work. No. Right? There's no guarantee because there are two different things. So what I'm trying to do as a painter is I'm trying to translate the colors that I printed or something which is very small on the computer screen, and then you translate it. So we cannot, obviously the colors are going to be different mm -hmm. because we just use the colors from the tubes or like straight from the tubes or like you mix them. So they always will be different than something like on the shiny surface. Yes, it is very interesting. Yeah. That's so, the scale that you said. Yeah. Because I've uh, recently, like there's a couple of times I've seen where paintings don't scale up. And mm -hmm. we think, oh, that proportion of yellow area works really well mm -hmm. on that small yeah. image. Mm -hmm. But actually, when you scale it up onto a bigger image, it's too much. It's too mm -hmm. much negative space. And so that, that kind of, then that's in the painting of it, isn't it? Whether or not. Yes. You, that's mm -hmm. like the um, artistic license, I suppose. Yeah. To change what yeah. you, you, you basically tear that up and put that to one side because you've got it there. Yeah. Um, and, on in a different way. And, and so, Michael, so you're, what's, what's your initial first mark on the surface? Well, I was going to say that most of my paintings have a drawing on the back. Hmm. Not a drawing, as in drawing. Yes. It might, might have a drawing, yeah. or it might have, and it will be the one that I've got wrong. It will yeah. be a warm up to try and get it in. Because I, I find that um, the ones that I project tend to be the figures that are full height. Yeah. Because they're, for whatever reason, I find them harder to get right. Ones where they're sat, or ones where they're uh, like, like, like that, that's easier to get for me visually to get proportion correct. And, 
And will you paint with I'll paint pens? directly without, oh, without okay. injecting, without doing anything. Yes. But normally, there will be one on the reverse, which is where I've worked out where the composition is. So it's, it's initial drawing. Do you think um, you're saying that CG figures or figures that are kind of at a different angles yeah. are easier for you to capture mm. more quickly than someone? Yeah. Full standing figure. Do you think that's to do with? The proportions of the board that you're working on, or um, would you still I would, if, I, if you had that really slim? I think actually it's got more like right, so you've got say if you're working on a character and it's got like an arm sticking out or something which gives it a plane this way, it's it creates more angles. Mm -hmm. But if, if you've it. got mm -hmm. a figure standing up like this, yeah. you've got no kind of mm -hmm. negatives. Mm -hmm. And oh, I see, I see so the, 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 the space that's inside mm. the area yeah, yeah, is there's more going yeah, on, there's, there's more the structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can go, oh, that bit is lining up there, yes. that bit's there. Mm -hmm. You're essentially like a triangle, isn't it? Yeah. Like, so it's easier to map out. But there's always what I wanted. Yeah, there's always a double on the back. There's always <laughs> working out, it really goes. And we went to a Picasso show, didn't we? Yeah. And it's with the lady's head. Rest on, rested on the pillow. There's about 17 different drawings of him moving, changing, tweaking. That and, was and fantastic to see. They're, yeah. they're just as justified, yeah. like yeah. working down and old masters underneath. You, know, you see them take away hands or move ahead. Or, so, so. And the, the, the initial mark, would it be pencil, would it be pen? Or, or Depends on my mood. Right. So I'm happy to make mark anyway. Okay. Whichever one I feel is yeah. most useful for that picture. And um, and Marie, how how do you? Well, it's very so. interesting this conversation <laughs> because I you know I, I it's it's fascinating to hear from other artists how you start your process. Mm -hmm. I I didn't go to paint college and um, so I've only ever worked it out by myself. So I have two different, completely different approaches. So I paint the urban landscapes, and then other things I paint is trees from observation, a particular set of trees where, um, when I go on holiday in Brittany, I paint this, always the same trees. So these I paint from observation, and if I do a self-portrait, it's from observation. If I do someone's portrait, it's from observation, or mostly still lives are from observation as well. And I find if I'm painting the trees, let's say, which is what I'm going to be doing in the next couple of weeks, hopefully, <laughs> in France, um, I never draw and I always use the brush on canvas as the first drawing. And I, I do very loose lines to sort of indicate where the left bit is and where the right bit is and roughly where the top is. And then I go in and I fill in the gaps and then I start with the, the proper paint to build up the painting. When I do the urban landscapes, um, just to remind people, yeah, no. um, they are so a bit similar to your uh, concept, but different. So all the urban landscapes that I paint, they are from locations very close to my home. So they're locations that I see every day. And because I see them every day or repeatedly through the weeks and seasons, I'm always observing them. And when there's a bright moment of light or bright shadows and so on, I capture that with my phone. And I have an almost endless collection of photos of all these urban landscapes. And when I want to do a new painting, I look through my collection and I might be looking through the collection of photos seven times and not see a particular painting I want to do. But one day, that one yeah. photo that I took three years ago might suddenly be the one I want to do today. And then my, my, my process is to, so it's on the computer screen. And I, unlike you too, I, I sort of have a vague idea of the com composition because it's, an existing thing that's already composed that I don't invent the composition of what I paint because I'm the reason I took the photo in the first, first place is because I love the comp composition as it was. 
And then I, uh, with a ruler, I sort of measure one centimeter on the screen and I have to, with my calculator, work out how, long, how big that is on my canvas, depending on the size of the canvas. Yeah. And I spend a lot of time doing this and it's so approximate, so I get a lot of things wrong. Eventually I get a, a drawing, which I've done on the ruler and the biro. So my first, ah. my main tool is biro on canvas, straight onto the canvas. Because biro allows for a, a strong line or, or a faint line, but it doesn't brush out with the hand. Yeah. You know, like pencil yeah. yes. gets really gray and dirty. So it, you don't get that with the biro. Um, and also as I'm, I used to make a lot of mistakes with the barrel, or the barrel would um, spit, you know, like when yeah. it's yeah. yeah. And it's become sort of part of my painting because often the ink from the barrel comes through the paint. Sometimes it sort of goes a bit like this and it, it stains the paint a little bit, but it often comes through as the paint is drying. So you don't know that's going to happen. Anyway, I've learned to live with it. And also now I'm slightly better at drawing with the um, Barrow, so I make less little. No, I don't know all that. Yeah. Um, and then I'll, I'll paint. So do you now but, like yeah. those marks that? Uh, I, do yeah, yeah, I do now. I do now. So these are the only, I'd say, the only accidental marks in my work. Yeah. Yes, I'm already so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Marks. No, I'm always like, 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 I really want to see the like. You know, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, well, I'd, I'd like to see it in detail. Mm -hmm. Do they not show in the production? Do they show yeah. much more. They really. You, if you're right in front of the painting, then you will notice occasional black dots. But I think mostly I see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. In fact, most people yeah. haven't told me. No. Um, there's a statement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have wondered if I should put, you know, you put oil on linen or oil oh, yeah. on oh, linen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but Maybe someone told me not to bother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone else is there. That's why it's there. And is it um, oil that you work with? So I work with oil. And so, so I suppose similarly to both of you, I will eventually, with the Barrow drawing, I'm making editorial uh, decisions as I'm drawing. So as I'm drawing from the photo, on my screen, I'm deciding what I'm leaving in or out. But then once I've got that drawing, then it's really a reassuring structure as well. Yes. That I'm yeah. then confident. I'm very confident. But, and sometimes I realize it doesn't work and I change it as I go. But um, it allows me to then free myself up with the color work. And, and now listening to these two, would you think about projecting? No, really, yeah. no, because I like the fact that I get a lot of imperf imperfection in my, so in the measuring, in the measuring. Yeah. so sometimes I, I've measured everything, I swear to the millimeter, <laughs> and yet these corners yeah. don't meet, yeah. so <laughs> yeah. I have to, and then I, like, I sort of like that, because mm. I feel the, the drawing is doing its own thing, and yes. it's up to yes. make yeah. it work. Do you ever paint the buildings from life? Trees, or what are you just not interested in? No, I mean, I probably would if I have actually, I have done from my, my house, mm -hmm. but these uh, bridge structures and industrial buildings, you know, they're in very busy streets, mm -hmm. and I really don't see myself as a plein air painter mm -hmm. in that conjunction. You know, yeah. there's drugs walking next to me, and people stop and say, Oh. You know, I just, I, I, I really like having my quiet space and I want to be the, so, and the reason I paint, I'm not a plein air painter at all, the reason I paint the street in Brittany is because my dad let me have this tiny corner of an attic from where he's got a studio, quite a nice big studio, and he let me a tiny corner and there's a tiny window, and from that tiny yeah. window I see those trees. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's already a frame, oh, it's already yeah. a frame. Yeah. And that's oh, all I'm so sitting there, my tiny corner, just looking at those trees and painting those trees. Fantastic. That's 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 and, and, and Lou, how, what, how do you start? I was sort of a combination of all of you. Uh, so I, I, take hundreds of pictures of the flower subject I want. So they're almost like a portrait of a flower, I'm quite particular. What does that mean? Mostly, well, 
I originally, when I was an illustrator, liked painting people. So I like this structural form of person, but people are hard to get as models and it drove me mental. You know, I'd see something on the street and think, I can't just like go and get them. <laughs> so I started painting flowers with the present particularly because they had a lot of form. And it was about the uh, creating the 3D form from a painting, rather you know, like from a flat subject. But I like I don't quite like them being pretty little flower paintings. I like a sinister element to them, so I put shadows on them like that. They're deliberate, and they to me they give it a um, an edge of like sinister mm. side to it and, and the marks on the shadows are normally different completely different to the flowers so the flowers i i take hundreds of pictures until i get the right composition of shadow and flower and the color of the flowers is very important to me as well and then i trace the flower onto a canvas so that my composition is correct like yours because I think drawing is a completely different medium. If I draw, if I do life drawing, I'll do it very loosely, sometimes with a brush, sometimes with, um, you know, painting directly onto the canvas, drawing with messy pastels and things. To see that as a thing in its own right, I don't see these as drawings. My interest in them is in the painting of it. And I don't want it to look like a photograph. I want them to look like a painting. Um, and so they they are they have elements of the photograph that I've taken in them, but I don't want them to look like that. I want them to look like a painting. And 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 how do they look like a painting? Is it because of the brush marks or because or, I or, think because of the combination and also I my, one of my favourite paintings is Rembrandt, and I love the light that he gets on things. So I will quite often wrestle with a painting for a year. So. I could get a likeness to the photograph quite quickly, but that's not enough. It's got to have, for me, it's got to have the form and it's got to have elements of it that bring the light out of the darkness. I'm very interested in that. And I think I'll wrestle with that for the rest of my life. I don't, I think, I never think it's worked how I want it to. But I sometimes stop at a painting because I've been doing it for like seven months or something and I've had enough of that painting. Um, but then I'll start the next one with the same objective. Um, so I think I'll probably be 105 and still try and wrestle with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to have a, a thing that you want to, that you know you want to get to, but then, you know, there's so much work to still do, isn't there? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's I could, a nice um, quest. Yeah, yeah. something to strive to. And there's enough subject matter out there to do, but, but these, these are lilies, and I call them COVID lilies because we got stuck in <laughs> lock in, lockdown, couldn't get out. My my presents and the dahlias that I paint normally, I could go on. I mean, everyone else might find it incredibly boring, but I could paint the same subject for the rest of my life, still trying to get that element into it. Um, and, you, and you talk about the two different types of marks from the background to yeah. the. Can you explain what you mean? Well, the the actual painting of the flowers tends to get, I, I mean, one of my paintings was this big and sort of as tall as me, and I was painting with a size two brush at the end, and I try not to, <laughs> I try to be looser, but I, I want the, I don't want you to see the mark based on the flowers, I want them to be um, three dimensional objects in their own right, but the background, which is the shadow and that, I like the looseness of that because it would be loose. Shadows aren't, they're not very often sharp shadows. They're not in my paintings. They're loose and soft. Yeah, yeah soft. soft uh, and, and I tend to do them in colours that, so for instance, that this shadow wouldn't have been blue. But that's where the painting element of it comes in, making a painting as opposed to just painting what I see. Mm. The, the colour becomes very important. Um, yeah, and, and would you use a similar brush or would you have a bigger no, brush? No, much bigger brush on the background, much looser. And do you paint the background after you've finished all the flowers or...? I sort of paint over it all at the same time. So, and the initial drawing of the flowers, I lose quite quickly because I paint blocks of colour in quite quickly. 
and then I'll have to, and then I'll go over it and take another layer. I'm painting lots, lots of layers of liquid to bring the light through at the end. So that, it takes forever. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you decide? How do you, when do you decide it's finished? How do you, is there a, a particular, in terms of the mark making, is there a particular set of marks in there or layers and things like that with the glaze? Is there a particular point where you think, okay? I think it's normally when I think if I carry on, it will start getting photographic. Yeah. So although in a in a reproduction they look quite sharp, they're not actually in real life. When they're big, they're looser. I mean, they're not really digital, but they're looser. And I think like I don't really like photographic type work. So I don't want that. I don't want to go that far. Mm. But it has to have the light element in it that I want. So mm. I'll wrestle until I think it's got that, and then I'll leave it. And some I look at now and I'll. I think I could go back and change it completely, but I would then be on one painting for the rest of my life. So I walk away. <laughs> Once I've finished it at that point, I leave them mm. on the side and move to another one. And then try and get that in the next one, you know, after my next problem. Do you, in your work, light is quite important with the reflection of the mm. ceramics and stuff like that. Mm. Do, do, is that a natural light or do you invent the light? Yeah, sometimes I do invent the light because sometimes the object which I find doesn't have a light spot on the light position to make it sort of condensing or uh, truthful to, to the direction of the light on a holding position. So then I have to I have to invent the light in a certain spot of the pottery. But um, and does your light source come from because because they're a sort of mishmash of different elements and you make your own, do you have to make your own source, like, you know, you have to work out which direction the light's coming from and then they all be the same or will they be different lights? Well, I would try, I mean, I, obviously I try to keep them sort of um, drifting within the textile uh, being sort of detached and attached at the same time, but I want to have this slight dimension of reality or, or probability where the light is coming from. So I would still put some effort into making sure that uh, the objects are lit in more, more or less the same way. The same way coming from the Yes, yeah. What I noticed in your work um, is that you, you, you make the objects very three-dimensional. There's a lot of shadows and light. But they seem to be floating in space because you don't extend the shadows to the fabric, for example, which means that, yeah, they, they look, the, the objects themselves, the ceramics, the pots, the bowls, look um, real, three-dimensional yeah, yeah, yes. objects. And, but then, they, yeah, they, they're like floating in this mm. sea of patterns and, mm. So that's the conscious choice. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the choice. Yeah, 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 that's definitely a choice. I think that, uh, I don't think it, I'm, well, I have to say that I'm doing many different paintings as well. It's still like it's not the only practice I do uh, practice. Uh, but I think that my problem was always like trying to bring together, like, first of all, like, uh, I would have to mention that I feel comfortable doing different styles. And there's advantage and disadvantage to it. To it. Uh, and I feel confident with hyperrealism, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I like hyperrealism. But I think that I've been a skill for, for it. Mm. So it was just a matter of finding, uh, finding something which would allow me bring all of these different ways of painting onto one image or in the one image. I was just going to say, I really like the contrast of the marks that you have in your painting. So you, you get that really loose. Three hand, yeah. those really loose uh, marks that, um, you know, represent the fabric. I really like the combination. Yeah. I think that also, like, obviously, I do try to make them 
sort of magical. I'm kind of interested in magical realism and things with a bit surreal and not necessarily, you know, so 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 real for real. And I think that it, it tells a lot about the way how I see things. So there are not like only still lives for me. I think that there's so many other things that I'm trying to put in these paintings, mm -hmm. but uh, the likeness of pattern, and it, there's always a, like a difficulty, like how do I bring the pattern, which I really, really like, into my practice, if my practice is not nothing about the pattern, or like how do I bring the pottery, which I really, really like, because I like ceramics, into my practice, mm -hmm. without making it so stiff and so yes. traditional, mm -hmm. or like how how to approach it to, to make it so that's still fresh and not to be another still life painter. Because traditionally, as you probably all know, like still lives are just like a practice for a painter. It's not, you know, it's like a practice for mm -hmm. a larger body yes. of work. I want to know you're still a life painter. I think I'll end my life. Being... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, for me, it's like the holy grail of. <laughs> Somewhere in the distance. Yes. I think so like brilliant. I think doing the same exercise every day. I think exercise is a great um, motivator for any painter. I like the idea of doing the same still life every day of my life as a, as a practice. Well that kind of relates back to you in a way, but yours is but yours is different because you are trying to have the kind of sinister Feel yeah. you know the, I like drama. Yeah. I like as, when I looked at your work, it's dramatic. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is a really pos uh, positive. Yeah, yeah, that's feeling more than sinister. I mean, I, I but, the original paintings I did, the first few were all really just about capturing the three D element of the flower, and then I got a bit bored of that, which was when the shadows came in. I think that was a chance thing that I took a photo of all that. Shadow is really fascinating, it's like an amazing shape. I'll put that in. And then since then I've played on that because it made this painting more dramatic. But I think it wasn't a conscious thing to start with. They were they were quite my my um, flower paintings I think are quite still. They don't have if I do life drawing, they're quite lively and have a lot of movement to them, but the flowers are the complete opposite. Uh, and, and I paint them, I couldn't paint it from life because the flower would be dead. <laughs> yeah. And about a week or something, and a year later, I'm still painting the same flower. So it takes on a stillness because it's from a photograph. Mm. But I don't mind that. It's interesting, I just listened to you, what you were saying then about repetition. And mm. um, you know, I, I find this quite problematic in my work, and I think you've recognized it a couple of times, is when I come across an arc or something that works that you really like, which has been accidentally created. Mm -hmm. And then the act of replicating that in another painting, which isn't accidental. Is it possible? Is it possible? Yeah, yeah. And so it loses all credibility. And so I've tried in a couple of paintings and thought, ah, I want to try another painting like that. And I, know, I think my brain is differently hardwired, but to sit down and I understand the practical form practicing and getting to really understand like the trees or the, how different they are from day to day. And um, but for me, I think it's more of a sense of like start a beer, the marks and they well before you make a, a mark almost, aren't they? Yes. Like what that photograph or what that composition means to you um, emotionally. And so mm -hmm. if you start going I really like that mark I made there. It always, always fails. Is it, does it have anything to do? Because I know I've got a, a couple of favourite brushes, mm. and I know I'm going to get. Yeah. It's not the same like every time. No, but yeah. it's close. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. the marks yeah. that yeah. these brushes make. Yeah. Do you yeah. do you think it has anything to do with? Do you have any like favourite brushes or things like that? Or because you sound as well, do you think? It has an effect whether you sounded the surface first. Or I, I really fell in love with that, that kind of tone. Yeah. And that is just a single uh, application of black paint. But, and it's, but it's loose. Okay. 
Okay. So that's the ones where um, it's a choice to take out half of the head. So that, that immediately is a choice about composition where that painting will end up. Because normally that will stay at the most part of the painting and probably there at the end. So the underpainting of that. Um, and then if you paint the colour over the top of the black, so you put black down, put colour over the top, and then let that dry, that's glorious. Because when you rough take a, and it has to be a coarse sandpaper. Because the, the fine sandpapers just take it off gently and they don't scratch. So the, the lines, you so that you, you don't get the lines. So you don't get the black ring, black ring, black ring, black ring. Um, so that's a different, uh, but again, I struggle to then replicate. So I. Yeah, what's well, so going You wouldn't yeah. get that again. No, no. It's simply being. Depending on how yeah. angry you were when you sat. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. It's, it's not the it's not the act of sanding it because I have a camera. Yeah. I could do it with two different colours, but it's different in the whole painting. So the, mm -hmm. the painting composition is different. Therefore, why would I replicate that? Yes. That specific mark. Whereas organically, if you just go for it and let loose, and you just trust trust yourself. Take half the painting out and paint that bit in. Rather than going, oh, well, I did that last time. I want that again. It won't happen again. No. Because that was painted in a moment. And also, actually, the marks that I actually make first are normally taking out a couple of things along. They're not marked. They're, they're taking off the section which will stay blank. So that helps with the composition. Yes, I see. Yeah. Um, Josie, we haven't talked about how you start the work and the, your what's your sort of first. Yeah, um, I think I have a similar approach to you. I don't, I don't grid up, um, and I think actually plants and uh, landscapes are a lot more forgiving than the places. <laughs> yes, because no one knows where these are. Yeah. <laughs> I know that bullshit you got. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but um, yeah, I go in with paint straight away. Um, I normally have a, a bright or dark background. So um, you'll do a ground or colour? Yeah, and then use um, a contrasting colour. Um, yeah, I mean, sometimes I use colours that um, for the actual initial drawing, I'll use a colour that I can see. Um, in the painting, but actually, this one I didn't. <laughs> I was just using a really bright red against a green background. Um, I think just because I wanted something that I could see. Um, and I quite like it when you can see the marks a bit like the vibrate, where you can see little hints. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's similar with the uh, neon colours mm -hmm. and colours. Yeah, really yeah. 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 Um, I, I really like that with mine as well. I try not to cover them all up. But, um, yeah, no, I use a, a paintbrush on a stick because I, I like so it's from far away. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'm that's yeah, so scary. scary. It's yeah. much, it much, much easier to, um, for me to see the proportions of it, and it, it's really important as well. I do yeah. get the drawing as correct as I can get it because I think that allows me to be freer with the brush and marks. Yeah. And when you say the drawing, are you you're drawing with paint? Yeah, yeah sorry. so you're drawing with paint with a with with a with your stick. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, um, so I saw on your Instagram, I was looking at your work and I was really interested in your work because you use so many different mediums. So you, you've got paint, but I saw some sketches you did with pencils. Yeah. Yeah. And some yeah. watercolour. Yeah. Maybe. And I thought these are so different, such different practices. For example, so um what I wanted to ask you is how hard did you find using coloured pencils compared to paint? Because coloured pencils are bloody tiring, aren't they? Yeah, yeah that's really hard actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did a while back, I um this is so I do a lot of drawing painting outside as well. Um and a while back I just took out some this from near home and I just wanted to do a quick sketch outside. Took out some really rubbish <laughs> pencil, colouring pencil, and I just couldn't get any colour down. So I love getting the marks quickly and yeah. getting intense colour. I just couldn't get any. And then 
you know when you go over it and it kind of just makes the paper all shiny and, <laughs> and I was like well this is really messed up but um, I found some older pencil prints I've got which are much softer so the colours come out much more easily and actually I have after doing a few sketches this was on holiday in the lake district after doing a few sketches sort of a bit later on in the holiday I realised I could get loads of different marks just from the pencil yeah, and I um, really like those sketches. I think thank you. Yeah, I really enjoy them. But it's, it's such a different, in terms of marking, yeah, yeah. you know, with a brush, you can be smooth and cover a bigger area. Yeah. Whereas with a pencil, almost every mark has to be decided on or has to, is individual, is mm. separate from the previous one. And so I'm really interested in how you balance the two things, like I, I, which one do you enjoy most? Uh, painting, painting. Yeah, definitely. I think because I, I quite like getting sort of big slabs of colour down quite quickly, mm -hmm. whereas with pencils, I, I really enjoy the mark making with pencils and the, the different types of marks that you can get, but it, you know, just the painter wins every time for me because mm -hmm. you can, you know, you can it's the yeah. 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 the paint is so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Julia, I noticed you use um, like decorating paint. Yes. <gasps> yes. So, oh, opaque. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Immediately satisfying. Yes. Oh my God, I yeah. love that. So I've been working with them for probably about 10 years now. And um, yeah, it, it's the, yeah, it, it's the brightness of colour, the instant, yeah. you know, I, um, in lockdown, because you need big space to use that type of paint and, that, and yeah. the smell and so forth. And, um, and and in lockdown, I was like, oh God, you know, and where can I work? Because I couldn't go to the studio and stuff like that. So I was like working small in the garden and doing, you know, going back to oil. And and yeah, the, the difference between the, you know, the type of oil paint and then the, the industrial household gloss sort of thing is, yeah. It's more like acrylic, isn't it? More, more colours. They're very, they're very, they're very well, yeah, they're very opaque. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're very strong. I'm not sure if they're quite. I mean, some some emulsion and stuff are so strong and mm. cover everything. Yes. So you can just block out your entire painting if you want to yeah. start again. Yeah, I would never yeah. stop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. it's, it's just a pleasure <laughs> that you need to cover. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cool. yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's interesting because. I, I do have to just be very careful to stop. Stop. Yeah. yeah. And and so I will I probably do more thinking about where the mark's gonna go than the mark making. Mm -hmm. So I will make one big mark and I have to step away from mm -hmm. for a while to, yeah. to consider the next one. I can't keep going. It's so important that. Yeah. Because I I found painting at home during COVID far more I, I sit down. I'd sit down and yep. I'll read a book, watch TV, play some backgammon, but the painting is there and you subconsciously, you are aware of it. And then you go and make a mark or you make a change. Yes. And it's actually the right one because you've sat with it for a day or two. Mm -hmm. And when you're, when I find myself in the studio, I feel an intense pressure to paint, yes. to physically paint rather than think. Or just have it there. And it, that's really interesting. Yeah, that's really so, thank God for Instagram that we can take breaks <laughs> from painting. <laughs> but, but no, yeah, like certainly with this residency, like I've been in this room now for, you know, like I'll start at sort of eleven o'clock in the morning. And sometimes I'm here to eleven o'clock at night. Yes. And this here. No. no. And and um, and so it and so and I'm sure if anybody's following on social media, they'll be like, no, yeah, she's doing loads of social media. But it, because it's a really good gap between mark making. Yes, yes, so you do yes, the one mark yes, and then you've got, you do yes, your thing. Yes, and like you say, you're living with it, yes, subconsciously yes, thinking, where is the next mark going to go? But I'm not going to put it on yet. Yes. yes. And until, yes. yes and then until it shows itself. Because it does, it does show you yeah. where you want. I find another way to do that is to, so when I leave the studio after a day's work, I take a photo of yeah. wherever I'm at. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm watching a some series, whatever, and saying, yeah, okay. And not really 
consciously think, what am I going to do tomorrow? But just let it sort of sink. Sink in. Yeah. And then the next day, somehow you know which bit you're starting. Yes. I, I, yeah, I yeah. do exactly that as well. No, see, I can't do that. Because mine, mine sharpen when they go on screen, and then I hate them and I think I'm rubbish. Oh. <laughs> and so I go back, and actually, it's not so bad in real life. Yeah. If it if it shrinks and it tightens up, yeah. Not what I'm after. And then I'll then it puts me off. Yes. Painting. But painting, like you said, it has yeah. to be interesting at distance and close. You have to be able yeah. to read something into it on both ends, exactly. and that's why. Yeah. Mark making is probably quite crucial because yeah. you have to have. I mean, I use little symbol stuff in the paintings, um, but you don't really see them possibly until you're up close. Um, so, hopefully, the color or something or composition will grab you, yeah. and then you'll get out close and then you read it. Um, I was trying to think about with my own practice of, of why I want the mark making to be energetic. Um, and whether it related to the subject. And so the idea that Mark, does the Mark making relate to the thing that you're trying to depict? And, and for me, as most of you know, well, I, work, I tend to do quite a lot of celebrity portraits and I'm obsessed with the idea of fame, celebrity. I get excited by glamour and Hollywood or, you know the, the music industry the queen the queen yeah. Yeah. and um and and so that that adrenaline of waiting backstage or waiting at the stage door or thinking oh am i going to meet them or am i going to see them or what, what am i going to say why am i even here you know all of those kind of questions and but that excitement of that adrenaline i think that i'm trying to put that excitement into the work and that's a realization of putting this together to do with mark making of why do i keep saying i want my work to be energetic or i want it to be and yeah no i have a question and for you of yeah related but finish please. well i just yeah so i was i was just trying to question myself to do with my mark making and why do i say i want it to be energetic or, or what is it and i wondered whether that so i was questioning in myself of, of, am i trying to get that adrenaline of waiting at the stage door in, into the work. And then, so I wanted to ask you, do you think that the marks that you make relate to the things that you're trying to depict? But you were going to ask me a question. Your question is more interesting. <laughs> no, no, no. OK, so I get the, the adrenaline and the energy that you're you're using when you're painting. And one of the results from that is the drips. Mm -hmm. And the drips, they communicate something very different when you look at them as yes. the viewer. Yes. They don't communicate energy. You know, you're dripping, you're it's it's a completely different feeling to the energy. So there's a huge contrast in your paintings of energy. But also this sort of melting bodies. Yes. What's um, that about? Well, I, for me, the drips is about the physicality of the paint. I love the physicality mm -hmm. of the paint, the thickness, the the weight, and I want, and I think that that is uh, in comparison to being a graphic designer in the past, that everything is shiny, flat, perfect, mm -hmm. and so I wanted the physicality of the paint and the the, a painting to be a painting, you know, to, to be about the paint. So the drips for me do show the physicality of the paint so much. But people have said there's a sadness, there's a sadness sometimes within the faces as well. So you know maybe subconsciously it's you know the loneliness of being so famous or people. I don't know, you know. The, so you don't put an interpretation apart from a physical one. No, the paint drips. No, you and don't put an interpretation in the dripping of the faces. No, that's interesting. How much of you do you think you paint with yourself when you paint? Um, good question. Um, I think that the they're confident, they're bold, they're loud. 
they're you know they're all of those yes, my yes. personality yeah um so i think that the, those things are in there yeah. of me um but going back to about the drips is the, they are crying they are yeah. Um, yeah. is um I wouldn't ever make a drip. Like I've done commissions yeah, before yeah. and they've seen the final thing and I've gone, oh, I really would like some more drips on that. And you're like, what? <laughs> you, I, in terms of mark making, do you sometimes correct a drip because yes. you don't want a drip there? Definitely. Yeah, that's yeah. Nice yeah. As well. yes. yeah, so like especially like painting the forehead or something, and then suddenly one goes straight mm. across the eye, and I was so happy with the eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I will wipe yeah. that away with my baby wet wipes, which I'm obsessed with. You didn't put drips on the COVID did you? No, and that was because of the... Was that on purpose? Yeah, well, that's one, the type of medium, because of the, the different types of paint, yeah. but also the environment of um, uh, working so small and at home. I, I really did need you find that different, would you? Um, because there yeah. are homes with uh, you doing it for the community. Uh, yes, and also I, I suppose I wanted them really to look like the person. the person, whereas working with a famous face, yes, I wanted to look like that person to what I understand that person to be, but I, um, I'm happy to, uh, to allow the paint to be more painterly with it. Do you think that's because we all know the faces so well? Yeah. So in other words, I say at least the uh, NHS people are known by their immediate circle, but not by anyone else. So you want the paintings to look like them. Yes. So here I am. Here. Whereas these, we all know them, so you don't need it to look as yeah close to them. It can be an image of them or your perception of them. Yes. Yeah. I, I certainly think that like all of the things that you know, I've never met Andy Warhol and and I was too late to meet Andy Warhol. So my understanding of Andy Warhol is from YouTube or yeah. films or and stuff. So putting all of those elements together, I had to kind of make Warhol as I'm, I think I know him rather than an exact real person. Mm -hmm. About the trips, like it's it's funny how different the people react to. Drip, drips. Uh, like I always thought of them as something which portrays the life. The fact that they're very much alive because you know it almost it's almost like capturing the fact that pain is not still, mm -hmm. and therefore the people who are portrayed it are not like still. Uh, you know they're not frozen in time. They're full of life because of these drips. To me. That's what my kind of instinct tells me when I look at them, that they're so much alive because of the drips. So it's very interesting like how different they people uh, approach the, the idea of the trip. But also because it, it relates to celebrity culture, it almost feels like, you know, like we, we kind of think that we know them, but we don't know them. And it's almost like, it's almost like, a, Maybe not a mystery about them, but it's something like really unreal about them. It's sort of or like they hide behind. Um, yeah, it just yeah. almost feels like a, yeah, like a waterfall of like, like illusion a, and yeah, so like like, And mm -hmm. also, especially when it comes to like people who are very, very famous, or very kind of like big, big in pop culture or in our mentality, and they are just like you know, it's all, all kind of fake in a sense. That that's Absolutely, like a feeling to it. Like the makeup, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. melting yeah. under yeah. the spotlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it fits in the you know, idea of like pop culture and celebrity because it kind of it's so surreal, it's almost unreal. Yeah, and yeah, it's so. amazing how Mark can it's make us look at mm. well, exactly. Work. Yeah, and one drip can make us see all these different things. Yeah. And and so like uh, say with going back to your uh, uh, landscapes, do you feel that your mark making um, 
the marks that the way that you the way that you paint the, the flatness does that do you think that that relates because of what you're painting as in because it, no because i flatten a lot of the textures which exist in the real world so yes. a lot of those uh, walls would be bricks for example but i choose to do a gradient a smooth gradient for example not indicate a brick mm -hmm. um yeah i don't know what to say about that no. um i uh, my aim is to be as humble as i can when i'm painting and in, in a way using a small brush or making small movements and getting the colors to all fade into one another is, is almost um, uh, trying to not make it a thing that I'm painting, like not trying to have a style or not trying to create any special effects. Yeah, but I, I think already you answered the question by, by saying, you know, you, you, you make one color rather than the bricks and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's just, it, that's already so interesting, you know. Oh, sure. Yes, yeah. The editing process within the, the mark making. It's creating. I mean, all these um, city places—they're they're pretty run down and chaotic. And I suppose I'm creating some sort of harmony mm -hmm. by taking out people and cars and graffiti and rubbish. Um, I, it's creating a harmony from chaos and maybe the paint, the maybe the factor of the. The, the the smoothness of the paint that I use it helps that process. Yeah, I, mean, I think that really happens very. Yeah, and I think it's interesting that you're saying that Louis is very dramatic. Like mm -hmm. saying, well, the work, and the, that's to do with the process of how you actually, you know, maybe it's to do with the light and the shadows, yeah. which are often very sharp. Mm -hmm. um, but your palette is very serene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's calming palette. Yeah. Anyone who knows me knows I am not. <laughs> <laughs> so you just put it onto your blanket. Yes, the person I'd like to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and Josie, you have, um, what about you in the fact of um, the, the your mark making? Do you think that it reflects of what you're what you're actually painting? How does it relate? Yeah, well, I was trying, I think similar to you. I was trying to think about well, why do I want the marks feel energetic yes you know and intuitive and, and i want people to see the marks and i said why why do i and actually i think it's to do with the experience of so um you know i know you always paint um places that i've been and this this one is um the oxford botanic gardens and um the greenhouse is there and it's kind of that excitement Going, going into this sort of curated garden, but not knowing, not knowing what's around the corner, and then seeing all these amazing colours all condensed into this one building um, that's, you know, that shows you loads in nature, all, all there crammed in, and you're kind of in amongst it and part of it. And I love that, and I love the shapes of that. And I, I don't know, I just I feel like to get a sense of that in my paintings, I, I think I just feel like I need to... Uh, I, I think how you were saying, you're very careful about where you put the marks, but you you know, you can keep it as one mark to show, to show that that's, you know, it's kind of the same for me, really. Yeah, the simplicity, but the beautifulness of that just one. Yeah. 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 And it's, it, yeah, it's a lot about the colours as well. It's not just the shapes of the marks. Um, with a different colour, but it's also, I, I think it's also um, kind of exploring what the paint is as well. So, and mm. I get that through the different brushes and then adding water. So, like the acrylics that I use mostly, adding water to that, and then sometimes you get the drips. Mostly, I would probably, you know, take them away. Take them away. Sometimes I do them, but yeah, it's, it's just exploring the paint as well. It's, so do you find a, a real happiness sometimes in how you manage to get the right pace of paint and you've got the right brush yeah. and it's yeah. and it's the right colour yeah. and you're just doing this and it's like 
everything is yeah. moving, everything falls into place and yeah. just the physical pleasure of that yeah, well, actually, it makes me smile so yeah, yeah. Like, yes <laughs> 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 so i'm kind of jigging around and i think that helps actually to keep moving while i'm painting mm -hmm. Um, but yes, it's so satisfying. Yeah. So it's not just a tool that you use, but it's sometimes you've got the right right mix. Yeah, sometimes yeah, it's yeah. the same paint, uh, paintbrush. You can't get anywhere because you're mixing wrong. You're yeah, medium yes. to whatever ratio it is wrong. Um, and I find you can colour all of it all together, like the mm. prints and paintings together. Mm. That's that's oh, what right, I really one like color. It. because I I can go over and over and over and over. It doesn't look like. But you can edit it and well, well, basically sand away the whole wall, which I do quite often, wow. and then put in the colour. Mm -hmm. And the colour, if it's right with with how I leave bits out, can bring the whole painting from what was going to be broken up because mm -hmm. I break up fifty yeah, percent yeah. of what I've made. Um, yeah, seeing Michael's good. work in real life, Join. it's. The sanding is very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah. None of us do, mm -hmm. I don't think, the type of mark making as well that Michael does in the way that the, the sanding is so, also yeah. as part yeah. of the, the marks. Mm. I find that very interesting. But that, that mm. like, I, I really like mixing up like a bucket of colour. Oh, a bucket. And that's my favourite ah. part, actually, when you get that colour on it. <laughs> and then you apply that colour down and then you take a few bits of tape off. And yeah, for whatever reason, you've left the right bits with like a bit of, like you were saying with the flash of, the flash of colours, and you've got the ochre next to a subtle yellow next to a, an orange or something, and it just sings, and you're like, oh, that's, that's my favourite bit, mm. I love that bit. Because also it's that reveal for me, yeah. taking that bit of tape off, and then that kind of should join up and make the painting work. So just the lack of it. Yeah, take masking tape. Well, it would kill no how much masking tape I use. Yeah. But uh, and and lining tape. Because I like the I want there to be that sense of graphic, because I love graphical kind of sensibility, but then I love painterly quality. And when then you sand away the two, you get something that you don't know mm. until you do that. So, yeah. And, and Michael, for you, what's your joy for the painting? What's the, the thing that's most satisfying? Talking to myself while I paint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I love commenting like what I'm doing. <laughs> so like, and I'm looking at the paint. I usually have this conversation with the paint in the palette. And I actually hardly ever mix colors. I kind of like them crispy, from the tubes. Obviously, when, because I use a lot of um, neon fluorescent paints and I'm working with oil paints I have to mix them myself because I cannot buy them in this country for some reason which is a shame because they are so they just literally talk to me like I look at this palette and I see all of these dots of color and they just speak to me I know it's not so much about the uh, you know mark making but oh, it's about yeah. this you know the part of like it's the a conversation yeah. and then I'm like oh this orange mm -hmm. and then I'm just putting this orange on my brush and then I love like playing with it like I love um, the moments when I'm kind of getting like you know I'm having my tick <laughs> and then I'm like oh this orange I have to put this orange somewhere <laughs> and then I put it somewhere and it's like <clears throat> and then I get these goosebumps you know when you can see that <laughs> But I think that there's this, this, yeah, very often there's this different point when I'm like actually doing something, and I have similar reaction when I do when I use certain brushes, and yeah, yeah. and but this is more to do with the marks, and then I'm getting really excited about this brush, almost like there are certain like kid qualities to it, like you know, it's almost like you hold a tool and you start like doing something with this tool and it's like so i'm very much interested in these impulses like very kind of um yeah childlike impulses like something very yeah outside of the box outside of my comfort zone and stuff uh, so yeah uh, I, so the color and sometimes the brush make yeah 
with brush strokes, certain brush strokes. I, I think when I'm painting, I'll, I'll start going, oh my god, I'm going to be really good at this. This is going to be great. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a fantastic painting. And then I get halfway, and I'm like, oh god, it's awful. I am just such a bad painter. I should really just give up. This is awful. And then, and then I'll get a lot more of it and I'll be like, oh no, I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know that you kind of just go back with some yeah, yeah. 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 And what about the What's your oracle? It's normally about a year after I've painted it because initially I start thinking oh, that's rubbish and I go away. But about a year later, I'll come to tell me it and I go, well, actually, I can paint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not about the way I thought I was. It's like, wait, actually. I wasn't happy with another one. Well, I think this has been drawn to a close. Yeah. So thank you very, very much for joining. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, yeah. And, thank you. and thank you very much, everybody at home. And um, we'll uh, be having another event soon, I'm sure. So do uh, check out uh, Degree Art and Contemporary Collective, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.